Okay. As a sergeant, I'm banking. I'm not going to have this. I'm so you're not going to have this conversation. So you just said you're, you're going to have the conversation. I'm not. You're not. I'm not. No. Well, if they want you to leave the property, you have to leave the property. If a business or a entity asks us to uh, trespass someone, we go off the fact that it meets their requirements to trespass someone. Um, so I did check. She's not going to be available today, and she is not going to be here next week. But now I'd like to address that issue. That, okay. is, that is not correct. I'd okay. like to address That's the fine. We're issue. not going to address it. Hey everyone, I am free. As promised, but very delayed, I have a follow-up to my trespass from the Department of Children, Youth, and Families from March of this year, and it's happening right now. It has taken forever. However, I have this very important follow-up for you all, so let's dig in now, shall we? First, the trespass has been quashed. I started getting responses beginning on June 29th to those inquiries. I have those documents posted here in this video for you when I am done explaining everything. I discovered the legal counsel's name and email address through a records request between Sergeant Werner of the Internal Affairs Division of the Vancouver Police Department and legal counsel from DCYF. Her name is Eleanor Boseman Clark. After a brief few exchanges, she clarified the trespass was revoked and let Sergeant Werner know. I then emailed Sergeant Werner to get his affirmation and it was attained. I also followed up with emails with Eleanor Boseman Clark about who authorized the calling of police the day of my trespass and why was it authorized. She has responded back and it is essentially a deflection in my opinion, meant to somewhat avoid pinning responsibility upon the actual person who called, since that is an employee of DCYF and Eleanor Bozeman Clark is their legal counsel. Second, I went back as you'll see here with my follow-up story. Third, the employee responsible for my unlawful trespass is Alyssa Mason. She was at the DCYF building at 907 Harney Street in Vancouver back in March in the video that I'll have shared with a link in the description. I attempted to do what I always do, seek a simple amicable arrangement to solve the problem by talking about getting a genuine authentic apology for the unlawful behavior that denied me liberties for the better part of six months and just call it good. However, Alyssa wanted none of it. When I initially went in, I was told she would be available shortly after a meeting. That quickly changed to her being in meetings the remainder of the day and from there out the entirety of the following week. It was abundantly clear that it was fabricated to avoid accepting responsibility. So, since she decided to avoid responsibility, I decided to head to the Vancouver Police Department to file a false report charge against her for her call that day in violation of Washington's revised codes of Washington, 9A.84.040. My arrival to the Vancouver Police Department was met with nothing but terrible behavior from uniformed officers. While I was giving the report to two officers, one a standard rank officer and his sergeant, it was apparent the sergeant was irritable and did not want to be involved in this complaint. It compounded when I called his officer and in turn himself out for some absolutely insane viewpoints regarding the law. So check out the long line of documents I have for you here. Let me know what you think in the comments below. The story just had new life breathed into it from the behavior of both Alyssa Mason and the Vancouver Police Department. So let's see how this played out together, shall we? Hi. Hi, are you Alyssa? No, I'm not. I'm Tish Reason. I'm, okay. I'm not the office manager here for the Clark office. Oh, okay. Um, Alyssa is stepping into a meeting. Okay. Um, you're more than welcome to wait if you want, but I just wanted to let you know just so we can communicate like it is going to be a little bit. Okay. Better, but. Well, you said you're an office manager? I am, yes. Okay, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Tish. Tish. Nice Steve. to meet you. Uh, I have a quick question. Yeah, so, back on March 6th, I came in here to actually do a public records call. Hello. Hi. Good. Hey, could I get a public records request from the Department of Children, Youth, and Families? Yes, you can. Okay. Uh, I'm Eleanor Boseman Clark. I'm the Department of Children, Youth, and Families. Uh, I'm 
public records request form. Um, I have a website, or excuse me, an email address. I don't have them here. Just got the public records request form. Yeah. Alyssa called the police on me, though. I don't need help from the police. What's that? I don't need help from the police. Okay. Well, I mean, obviously things are, you, aren't going well. Are you well recording here. right now? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Obviously, things aren't going well right now. They want you to leave the property, so something's going on. Okay. And have me trespass. I've spoken with Eleanor. I've emailed with Eleanor Bozeman Clark. She's one of your lawyers for DCYF. She revoked it, contacted Sergeant uh, Klesson Werner over at the VPD. And they, as well, responded and said, yeah, it's revoked. Mm -hmm. I need to get information as to why this happened, because it's, it's clear that it shouldn't have happened back on March 6th. In okay. fact, Jared was here that very day. Yeah. Um, but the fact that I was unable to complete my story, I'm a journalist, yeah. and had the police call on me for trying to get a public records request form. Yeah. March 6, 2023, 10, 55, 42. 911, what's the address of your emergency? 907 Harley Street. All right, and what's the phone number you're calling me from? 360-993-7841. Okay, what is your name? My name is Elisa Mason. Can tell me what happened? I'm just calling about a gentleman who is in our lobby. This is the Department of Children, Youth, and Families. All right. And he is refusing to leave, even though we have asked him. Our security guard has asked him. And we need some help getting him outside. He is... What's your upset about? He just wants some information, but he's recording us. And I have told him we do not give it our permission for him to record us. We need him to go outside. If he has any questions, he can call us on our phone number. Mm -hmm. And he said he has every right to be here. And he is just sitting in our lobby. Do you know his name? I do not. Is he white, black, Hispanic, Asian? Uh, he is... White. Now, how old is he? Probably 40s. That's fine. And what color shirt or jacket? He is wearing an orange ski jacket. And pants, uh, jeans. Three, uh, Levi's. Jeans, yeah. He is wearing skinny. Also, yes, yeah, he's skinny. Mm -hmm. He's wearing a jacket over his head with a baseball cap and a mask covering his nose and mouth. And it's not a surgical mask, it's a, like a ski mask. Yeah. He didn't see any weapons or anything on him. No, but he has a backpack and he has a, um, like a GoPro camera on a stick. What kind of information does he want? Like someone specific? Yeah, I think he just came up and asked for our public records information. And then he started... On someone specific? Like, could this be a restraining order? Violations? No, he just, he asked for just public records information that we could give him, but then he started going off on an RCW, just trying to explain his rights. And we have that information. We're more than happy to give it to him, but... All right. All right, we're going to be with you as soon as we can. If anything changes or he gets worse, you call us back, okay? Of course. Thank you very much. You bet. Bye-bye. Really unreasonable, mm -hmm. like to the 10th degree unreasonable. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get an understanding of why did that happen. Did that happen to him? So yeah. that's what I'm looking for. So do you know or does someone else here know I'm why? Just moved to there. Just moved here. Yeah, okay. I'm like new to the to that agency, so I was not here when that actually happened, okay. so I don't know. Okay. Um, I 
Yeah, you should just take a minute. I mean, I can come back later if need be, but I'd prefer to just uh, listen. I mean, I've got the 911 call audio log. I've got a response from a lady named Pamela Williams, who apparently is uh, the constituent service manage program manager. Um, yeah. And so far, they're just like, yeah, this shouldn't have happened, and mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, yeah, so you just wanted to touch base with her on why? Yeah, I just want to figure out like why did she call the police on me? I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe we could ask Jared. I, I don't think I was going crazy that day on March six, was I? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I don't know. I, was like, I mean, I was committing the the class A felony <coughs> of uh, having a video camera and wearing a mask. So I mean, of course. That is a top-notch felony right there. But absent videoing and wearing a mask, uh, I was just getting a PRR, okay. and that's all. So if I, if I could just ask her a quick question, maybe you could ask her if she could come out real quick. Yeah, yeah, let me know. Yeah, and I, it's like seriously going to be like a two, three-minute thing, and then I'm out of here, and okay. that's it. Yeah, cool. Okay. Thanks. All right, thank you. I was going to come out earlier, and then they're like, oh, no, he had to run over. I'm working on two stories. Ah, like This was okay. an incidental one, and I, I there's one I'm working on at the Sheriff's Department, oh, okay. so they were like, uh, yeah. He's here, so I had to go talk to him. No, nah, that so. makes sense. Like, you know, in and the it's right there vicinity. too. So it's like, rah, rah, yeah, rah. yeah, for sure. So what you um, So I did check. She's not going to be available today, and she is not going to be here next week. So um, she's in meetings all day. She is going to be in meetings all day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Okay, and but she knows what my offer was. I did pass that along. Okay. Well, I guess that's all I need to know then. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Have a good rest of the day. You too. Take care. Thanks. You well. Well, there you go, guys. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I don't know if uh, Vancouver Police Department's gonna, you know, choose to prosecute this. I highly doubt it, but I am going to go over there and I am going to file a criminal complaint against Alyssa Mason for making a false report to 911. Uh, as we just got on camera from uh, Tish, I think it was Reaser, Reaver, I think it was Reaser. Uh, Tish said everything I needed, which was they got training on this. They, they, that, they knew that should not have happened. What do you think led to the situation then when, as I had said, I mean, I don't know if you've looked up the report or not or had any I, emails, honestly, but... Honestly, I, I haven't. I've seen emails come through on it, um, and I just, you know, I've seen the after kind of stuff gotcha. that came through, but I wasn't working here at the time, so I don't know. Gotcha. Um, when did you uh, start working here? Um, I started working here uh, first day, April 10th. Okay, so not too long after that happened, about yeah. a month after, okay. Yeah. And what was, what was the nature of the emails? Um, honestly, so they were talking about what should have happened in the situation, okay. um, directed everyone like this is where the forms are okay. for everyone's knowledge, um, you know, if someone comes in to request records, this is kind of the protocol that we need to follow. Sure. Um, so just outlining all of the that, process. what should be done, um, what should happen moving forward. Um, what about so, the recording? Did they give you guys any training or directives on that direction? I mean, I don't know if they would have done that before I started. I've done a lot of training since sure, I've started. Um, but so you haven't received any training on about people recording and taking photographs in the lobby? Oh, so they did They did say that it is, of course, within your right to do that. Okay. And, and referenced the laws and everything. That, Great. Okay. Yeah, so that's good. I mean, I'm glad to hear that they have, they have done that training. Yeah. 
All right, everybody. Well, that's uh, what you heard there from Tish, the office manager, uh, one of the one of the office managers here at the DCYF office at 907 Harney Street in Vancouver. Uh, it's pretty apparent that uh, when I got in there, Alyssa was going to be. This is going to be on a, uh, a short in a short meeting, and all of a sudden the meeting extended to the entire day. A series of meetings all day long. I mean, come on, that's absolutely absurd. Everyone knows it. She doesn't want to accept responsibility for what she did, and now she finds herself in a situation where, in not wanting to accept responsibility for that, even though she knows Pamela Williams sent the email to me that she did, even though. The, uh, the lawyer for DCYF sent an email to me revoking, and to Sergeant Werner of the Vancouver Police Department, revoking the trespass warning. And Sergeant Werner responded back saying from the police department that trespass warning is in fact revoked. That's why I went back there today, the day after I received that revocation no trespass warning this is hubris that's all it is she cannot she cannot face the notion that she has to admit that she made a mistake and now she pins herself in the corner and as i told tish if that's the case then i'm gonna have to go file a complaint i don't know if the uh criminal complaint for false reporting i don't know if the vancouver police department's gonna do anything with it maybe they will maybe they won't but that's what i'm gonna do because I'm going to hold our government to account. It's going to happen. I don't care how far I have to go with this. I will go to legislators if I have to. I will keep working on this story. I will keep coming back if I have to. I'm not going to stop until in one manner or another, the Department of Children, Youth and Families here in Washington State acknowledges the wrong. Now, that being said, I am still waiting for an email response from Eleanor Boseman Clark. She's the lawyer from DCYF. I'll include that here in the email. Saying, not only was the no trespass warning revoked, but I had asked several questions, which you'll see in the email, about who authorized the, the trespass that day. Was it Alyssa Mason? Was it a manager higher up? Somebody had to do it. And if, well, it's not if, but if, Whoever did it has to accept responsibility for that. They had no lawful authority to trespass me that day. Yet they did. And the Vancouver Police Department shares responsibility in this. <coughs> they should have actually not even implemented that. When you look at Officer Rollins from the Vancouver Police Department from the original video, and the link will be in the description below, Either he's the oldest looking 21 year old officer in the world or the leathered face that he has indicates that he has been with the police department for a long time, has a, enough experience to know that RCW 9A5280 does not allow a public agency where you can go and do public business to include record while you're doing that business does not allow that agency, department, etc., to just trespass you whimsically. You cannot do that. He should have known better. Unfortunately, Sergeant Werner and the other sergeant that I complained to from the uh, professional standards, internal affairs department, whatnot, rallied behind Officer Rollins. Clearly, they didn't indicate that they had spoken to him, that there was a wrong that had been done. They refused to say or acknowledge that that in fact DCYF did not have the authority to do that. So what, what did the city of Vancouver do? They got into bed with the state of Washington's DCYF and said, we're gonna be on the government side. We're gonna team up against you and violate your liberties. And I'm just not gonna stand for it. I'm not gonna stand for it. I'm gonna keep pushing on this. Uh, you guys have my promise on that. So I'm gonna head down to the Vancouver Police Department and file a complaint. And uh, I'll see you guys there. Following up, as I said a moment ago, on a complaint against Alyssa Mason. The 
office manager of the Department of Children, Youth, and Families office at 907 Harney Street in Vancouver for false reporting back on March 6, 2023. Uh, I'll have a link in the description below, as I said a minute ago. Um, I, as you just witnessed, made every effort to extend an olive branch, just have her admit uh, that she screwed up and make a simple apology. You know, the old school thing our parents taught us. And how about that? I'm not here to shame or anything like that. You guys, you guys know me. I don't uh, do that. I mean, there may be a time in the future where I have to apply a little more salt than I normally would, but I try to give people a second chance. I try to get the problem corrected as opposed to just having the issue continue and go without any resolution. But uh, as you guys saw, Tish, the other office manager said, uh, all of a sudden her brief meeting this morning extended to the entire day. And now she's gone all week next week because she doesn't want to accept responsibility for it. So here we are at the police department. I'm gonna make a complaint. See if we can get this resolved. Hi. Um, I know it's not records, but I just need to speak to a police officer about an incident that occurred back on March 6th. Okay, can you try calling the non-emergency then? No. Okay, um, try calling the non-emergency uh, non line and they can get an officer to come out and speak to you. I'd really prefer to just do it through here um, because I don't want to have to give out my number, my work number. Okay. Um, if you, uh, we have a phone number here that you can call that, that won't trace back to you, um, but we don't have officers available right now. We have to pull someone from the road. Um, so you can use your landline phone over here uh, to call out the emergency. Okay. In the court, yeah. should we have the old papers? All right. All the witness she has. All the other the documents, the, eight all one. the papers. One for the, um, eight one one seven. Right. He did. He in the court, clerk county we show it in the court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. There we go. How's it going? I'm Steve. Uh, I am looking to make a complaint against an employee at the Department of Children, Youth, and Families. Um, I don't know if you guys had enough time to look at the notes and then talk to Sergeant Cl uh, Werner or not. Mm. Okay. So back on March 6th, I was at the DCYF working on a story. Uh, Officer Rollins responded. Oh, sorry. Okay. And uh, in my attempting to explain to him why I was there okay. since he was in the midst of trespassing. Ultimately, he did trespass me. Um, I was telling him that I was a journalist or working on a story. I didn't really get too far into it because it didn't seem like he was interested in listening to it. He just listened to the state side and then promptly trespassed me. I got some evidence today from an office manager at DCYF, apparently there's two there at this point, that came on approximately a month afterwards. During the interview today, the employee, the office manager, explained to me on video that they had been trained on what had happened because I was originally there to just do a public records request and to inquire about an individual who apparently had some like discrimination based issues when she went to go in to do a public records request. Okay. That was the nature of the story. Gotcha. So she said that it absolutely was not supposed to happen. The name of the employee is Alyssa Mason. I've got the 911 call audio log where she's saying we don't want him here because I'm recording. We all know, I'm assuming, especially you as a sergeant, if it's a public place, you can record if it's a publicly available location. So uh, whether she knows or not, the fact of the matter is what she did was just unlawful. She had no right, no authority to trespass me. And for that matter, neither did Officer Rollins. So I'd like to- Are you talking about it's against their policy to do it that way? No, it's unlawful. They have no authority to say we want this person out of the building. Just like you guys couldn't trespass me out of here unless I'm breaking the law, right? You couldn't say, we just retired having you here, please leave. You can't do that. So 
Well, private I'm, property managers can do that. That's not private property, it's state property. So uh, here, have, you, state there, but. have you, if you, if you have a complaint against somebody from DCYF or whatever the building was, I forget what you said. I'm looking to have a criminal complaint filed for false reporting against Alyssa Mason. She okay. made a false report. There was nothing accurate about what she said in terms of ill. Uh, now, you know, obviously if I'd slap someone or stole their stuff or something, right? Obviously you have a basis to not only arrest me for whatever the crime would be, but you can also say, and now you're trespassed for X period of time because you were disorderly or whatever the crime is, right? Okay, we will take the crime report if you want to have, give us a good description oh, of what happened. Okay. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. If you want to watch, you know what's going to be the best thing to do? Don't even bother taking a report other than just what well, it's kind of You can watch the story online. Okay. I've already published the yeah. story. That's we'll the video. We'll probably just evidence. take a private report. That's what we normally do. Okay. All right. So. Um, what I can also do is what you don't have from today, because I just got the uh, video footage today where the other uh, office manager admitted to Alyssa not doing the appropriate thing, as well as the, a lawyer from DCYF who revoked the trespass warning against me seven months later. And Sergeant Werner, on behalf of VPD, saying, yes, I acknowledge that. There is no trespass warning now. It means I was deprived of my rights for seven months. And that was a combo between Officer Rollins and Alyssa Mason. Okay. Neither of them should have done what they did. I was unable to complete my story. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as civil damages, I'll deal with that later. But as far as the criminal stuff, I'd just like to have that uh, report taken so I can initiate this process uh, because it just shouldn't have happened the way that it went down. And honestly, if Officer Rollins had just spent a little bit more time, I mean, he, maybe he would have still trespassed me, but if he had just looked at the video, this would have been avoided. He could have just looked at it and been like, gosh, all you did is come in and ask for a public records request. I know it's a class A felony in most circumstances, but uh, in that circumstance, I don't think it was, so. Okay. Okay. Um, do you want to provide your name for this? Steve. Steve. And is that short for Steven? Yeah, just go Steve, that's fine. You want to go? You want to identify yourself as Steve? Yeah. Do you want a last name? So I'd rather not give it. Okay. Uh, let's do Carter. Um, what's the best way, uh, way to reach you as far as uh, Yeah, sure. I'll give you my uh, company's email address. It's inland, I-N-L-A-N-D, mm -hmm. inland, auditing, A-U-D-I-T-N-G. I'm sorry, so I'm not sorry. that fast. A-U-D-I-T-I-N-G, media. Protonville, P R O T O N M A I L dot com. Dot com. Yep. And that's the name of my corporation out of Wyoming. So. Good to see another lefty. A lefty? Too few. I don't write left. I'm ambidextrous, but I shoot oh, like, I see, so. I see. <laughs> All right. So, as far as the crime that you're reporting, your false report. And what, what is the false report that they gave? The false report is that I was, in effect, being disorderly. Mm -hmm. They were uncomfortable. What she said in 911 call was I was, if I, if I recall correctly in the call log, uh, the audio call log, was that I was uh, videoing. They did not want that to happen. They wanted me to get out of there, uh, that I was requesting a public records request form. Now, of course, I go in there today thing happened. I got my public records request and I left. I was in there for about five minutes mm -hmm. because the lawyer for DCYF let them know what was going on. This is exactly what should have happened in March. I mean, it should have just been to get my form, uh, get the content that I was looking for, go and release my story. So the false report, the um, employee there at the DCYF said you were disorderly. That's what was false. I think that was the implication is that it was making the women uncomfortable. They closed their blinds and they called the police. There was no predicate for my removal. Just like here, like if, you know, I'm standing in the lobby recording. I can do it all day. Mm -hmm. Might make people uncomfortable, but there's no predicate to remove me for that. Now, if I started being disorderly or something like that, of course, there would be a predicate to remove me mm -hmm. and trespass me. That never happened, and you can see it in the footage and the story that I released. Um, it was about a month and a half ago for that. So that it was implied that you were disorderly? I think that was the implication there, yeah. Because there had to be some basis for my removal. 
because I was trespassed for a year. I mean, you don't get removed, you don't get trespassed from a location unless you're doing something wrong. It's not a whimsical allowance for just banishment from a place for no good, you know, no good reason. And do you remember what the name of the employee was? Yeah, uh, Alyssa, A-L-I-S-A. I-S-A? Yeah. Mason, M-A-S-O-N. Okay. I've got her phone number and her sure. date of birth if you want it. Just a second here. I gotta look it up on the police report that I got. Control 5 to David 22. Could I get a case number? Oh, you're gonna go faster than me. <laughs> See if I can get it before you. Copy, thank you. Jesus, that's a lot of emails. Wow. Okay, I think this is it. Give me just a second here. I'm trying to find that. Uh... Had you already provided that with dispatch? I think I saw a note in there, but I'm not 100% sure. Her date of birth and phone number? Did you give that to dispatch? No. Okay. I mean, actually, you know what? It's in your desk. If you guys just want to look it up, it's, it's right there. Okay. I mean, I remember when you go down about a quarter of the way down the page is where it listed the, the caller and date of birth and phone okay. number and all that. If, if it's in there, then yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't need to get that from you. Um, and it, this was March 6, 2023, right? Yeah. Do you remember about what time it was? I think it was, it was about 10.30 when I arrived, and I think Officer Rollins arrived at about 11, I'd say. Sounds about right. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the argument that I'm putting forward is that when you listen to the call log, you can hear her say, you know, he's, he's uh, taking photos and he's here asking for a public records request. He's making us uncomfortable. It was something to that effect. Mm -hmm. And then that's when Officer Rollins shows up and I attempt to explain to him. He says, and we kind of argued a little bit. I mean, cordially, if you will. I mean, he wasn't like yelling or anything. Sure. But... I, I just explained to him, you know, it's, it's a public place. I have every right to be there working on what I was working on. Mm -hmm. and, and part of it, what it was, was um, so there can be an understanding of the nature of the story. There was a woman with pretty severe disabilities that, had, that has uh, a handler, mm -hmm. somebody that assists her, took a paratransit vehicle there. Can't use phone, can't use internet, but she had explained that she still wants to try to make an effort to try to do things on her own to the best of her ability. So she goes to this facility. Apparently it's the same one that tried to do the same thing at the Clark County Public Utility. She's had a couple problems in the area. Mm -hmm. Apparently they mocked her, allegedly, and uh, were making it difficult for her to get a PRR form. Gotcha. And so I wanted to go there and see if there was actually issues with uh, public getting a public disclosure request. and. Uh, Sounds like that's what you Yeah, found. that's exactly that's what I found right there. So it's like, that's the whole point of the press. You go and dig this stuff up gotcha. and you try to get the problem fixed. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I have a case number for you, if you'd like that. Yeah, I'm recording. So. I, I just say it in the mic there. Yeah. Cool. So it's the year 2023. Dash zero two one seven eight six. Okay. The case number. And then if you guys get like a, a email address or something, I can just email you the video from today, um, probably in a couple days or a week or something like that. That way you can see the interview with the office manager Tish from today, where she says we've been trained on this since. Uh, in effect, that should never have happened, etc. Mm -hmm. And then you can that way you can see that follow up and see how it relates to the nine one one call officer on showing up all that kind of stuff gotcha um yeah if you'd like to uh email me th uh, that i can certainly attach it to this report and everything sure um do you, you want, want me to write it? it out just so it's not I, I can say it out loud but 
in effort to avoid uh, spelling errors and such, I'll write out my email for you, okay? Sure. If you just want to show it to me, I'll just I can freeze frame it on the camera later. That's my name. Jason Nicholson. Jason okay. period Nicholson cool. at cityofvancouver.us. Sounds good. And then uh, do I have to go talk to uh, Sergeant Werner again now that I've got this additional stuff as it relates to Officer Rollins? Because uh -huh. at the time, I'm my best guess, it's just a hunch, is that Sergeant Warner thought that something else was going on as it related to Officer Rollins making the decision that he did. But mm -hmm. I think with what Office Manager Tish said today, it's even more clear that Officer Rollins should not have done what he did. I'm not looking well, to have the guy hang, but he should probably get some training on, you know, well, protecting if a, activities. Well, if a business or an entity asks us to uh, trespass someone, we go off the fact that it meets their requirements to trespass someone. So. Much like if 7-Eleven said, this person was being disorderly, I'd like him trespass, we would issue the trespass on their behalf. Your commander's in here, right? I, I think so. Not trying to like smash him in, but yeah. that analogy was completely not okay. right. Sir, do you, do you want to make a complaint against Officer Rawls? I can help you. I do, so, but yeah. actually hearing this, I'd like to have this corrected too, because... Okay. Let's, let's talk about one thing at a time. Do you want to make a complaint against Officer Rawls for what occurred on March 6th? Yes. Okay. And then, then I'm I can to address that. that. Then I can get that information for you, okay. and we'll go from there. Okay. Sure. I think we have the information we need for you. Yes, but now I'd like to address that issue. That okay. is that is not correct. I'd okay. like to address that's the fine. We're issue. not going to address it. We're going to go. Oh, I'll get the information for you to, to make. Why would you not address this? Because we're not going to. Okay, we're just not going to. We can go. I think okay. We can. I'll be right back. With, I'll be right back with the forms. Okay. I need to talk to somebody else, Sergeant, above you. Okay. Nice. Thank, you, Thank, you. Thank you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this city. This city. God damn. I, if that commander's available or a lieutenant or, or a captain, I've got a problem with that sergeant that just came out now. So I need to talk to somebody above him because what I just heard from that officer Nicholson and then tried to lodge a complaint right there or address the issue with the sergeant, the sergeant just straight up said, I'm not gonna deal with it. So really inappropriate. Uh, that was the time to handle it right there. He's his supervisor. And apparently as a supervisor, he doesn't wanna deal with it. So I need to talk to whoever his boss is. So the well, look, I, I don't want it to be like some official thing. I just want to talk to commander and be like, or, or a lieutenant or a captain and say, look, this is what he said. Here it is on camera. He is literally saying the exact same thing that Officer Rollins said. Why would a lawyer from the state of Washington for DCYF countermand exactly right. what that officer just said? because he's wrong and so is Officer Rollins. And if this keeps happening, we're just gonna keep having these problems where trespasses occur, then it gets revoked just like it did because Officer Rollins didn't, did something he should not have done. I, I need to deal with somebody here that can make a command decision on the training because this is what led to the problem in the first place. Thanks. Look, all I'm looking to do here is just have a, con a cordial conversation. If we okay. disagree in the end, so be it. I at least just want to document what I want to provide to the city. I'm trying to seek redress of my grievances with my government. Right, so I think the, the officer, that was what he was here for. He took the report that you wanted okay, to make. Fine. Okay, um, These are the forms for a complaint if you'd like to make it. Sure. Um, you can fill yeah. them out or if you don't want to do that. I think oh, I, have a, I have a decent understanding of what's going on. Yeah. And I can do it myself if you want to meet. But okay. if you so choose, absolutely, there's all the information you would need sure. to do that. No, no, I'll make the complaint. All I want to say is it seems like there is still a problem going on. Because, and, and maybe I misunderstood. Maybe I misunderstood, so I just want to clarify. As a sergeant, 
I'm banking. I'm not going to have this. So I'm you're not going to have this conversation. So you just said you were, were going to have that conversation. I'm not. You're not. I'm not. No. So this is not the proper venue to do that. If you want to make a complaint, by all means, please do that. No, this isn't an issue about. Okay. Is there anything else besides? I'm trying to address an issue. Okay. Is there anything else that you want from the police as far as like to make a complaint or we've taken a police report from you? Here's the, the complaint form if you want to make a complaint. I'm trying Other to, than that, I'm not going to engage I'm in any of the problem that came up. Have a nice day. Wow, what is your problem, Sergeant? I was out of town completely. Jesus. Wow, I, I guess I shouldn't be shocked. It was the Vancouver Police Department that did this originally. Uh, what a night and day difference between policing when you look at and juxtapose the Vancouver Police Department against the uh, Clark County Sheriff's Department. Look at Sergeant Jimmy Rogan, look at Sergeant Chris Nick, or uh, sorry, uh, uh, Deputy Jimmy Rogan, Sergeant Chris Nichols. Deputy Rogan. Welcome back to my tyrant free zone. Excellent, yes. It's squashed. It's squashed. And then look at that sergeant there and his officer. The sergeant is taking it as criticism, and it is, but it's constructive. What I'm trying to do is avoid the same problem again. And you can tell there's absolutely no will to do so, but they continue to hold the same view that when I was at DCYF back in March, if they just asked that I be removed for any reason, any reason whatsoever, they could trespass me. And the, the young officer used an example of 7-Eleven and juxtaposed that against DCYF and came to the conclusion that they're the same forums. 7-Eleven is a non-public forum. The um, DCYF, Department of Children, Youth and Families, that is a limited public forum but in case law in Washington state, for example, the uh, uh, state of, I'm sorry, Lewis versus the state department of licensing, that made it clear implicitly that you can view your public officials in the course of their duties. So that's pretty disappointing here. Um, with that being said, uh, I'm gonna continue this story. It's obviously got a lot more to it. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe, comment below. See you guys at the next location, which is going to be another portion of, another precinct, rather, the Department of uh, Policing for the City of Vancouver.